if you've ever looked over at your shockingly productive colleague and said, how do you find the time? You know how cosmologists are currently feeling about the early universe. Since it first started sending back science data in mid-2022, the internationally funded, state-of-the-art James Webb Space Telescope, JGWST, has been giving us images of distant galaxies that appear to have formed and matured far earlier than our models predicted. It's enough of a problem that some are calling it a challenge to our entire cosmic timeline. In a new study, an international team of astrophysicists has discovered several mysterious objects hiding in images from the James Webb Space Telescope. Six potential galaxies that emerged so early in the universe's history and are so massive they should not be possible under current cosmological theory. Each of the candidate galaxies may have existed at the dawn of the universe roughly 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang or more than 13 billion years ago. They're also gigantic, containing almost as many stars as the modern-day Milky Way galaxy. It's bananas, said Erica Nelson, co-author of the new research and assistant professor of astrophysics at the University of Colorado Boulder. You just don't expect the early universe to be able to organize itself that quickly. These galaxies should not have had time to form. Nelson and her colleagues, including first author Ivo Labe of the Swinburne University of Technology in Australia, published their results February 22nd in the journal Nature. The latest finds aren't the earliest galaxies observed by James Webb, which launched in December 2021 and is the most powerful telescope ever sent into space. Last year, another team of scientists spotted four galaxies that likely coalesced from gas around 350 million years after the Big Bang. Those objects, however, were downright shrimpy compared to the new galaxies, containing many times less mass from stars. The researchers still need more data to confirm that these galaxies are as big as they look and date as far back in time. Their preliminary observations, however, offer a tantalizing taste of how James Webb could rewrite astronomy textbooks. Another possibility is that these things are a different kind of weird object, such as faint quasars, which would be just as interesting, Nelson said. The team ran calculations and discovered that their old galaxies were also huge, harboring tens to hundreds of billions of sun-sized stars worth of mass on par with the Milky Way. These primordial galaxies, however, probably didn't have much in common with our own. The Milky Way forms about one to two new star every year, Nelson said. Some of these galaxies would have to be forming hundreds of new stars a year for the entire history of the universe. Nelson and her colleagues want to use James Webb to collect a lot more information about these mysterious objects, but they've seen enough already to pique their curiosity. For a start, calculations suggest there shouldn't have been enough normal matter, the kind that makes up planets and human bodies, at that time to form so many stars so quickly. If even one of these galaxies is real, it will push against the limits of our understanding of cosmology, Nelson said. Researchers have likened the situation to flipping through someone's old photo album, expecting to find baby pictures and seeing a full-grown adult instead. With a person, you might just conclude that they're older than you thought, but with early galaxies, you very quickly run into a problem with the age of the universe itself. J.B. West is looking at galaxies that are so distant that their light has taken more than 13 billion years to reach us. Based on what we think we know about these galaxies and what we think we know about the age of the universe, it looks like there hasn't been enough time since the Big Bang for massive galaxies to have formed. As amazing as JWST is, when it comes to the very earliest galaxies, the information it provides is not completely straightforward. While it has shown us spectacularly breathtaking views of nearby nebulae, star clusters and galaxies, its images of the most distant galaxies look, 
in general like fuzzy little dots. They do have some discernible shape, but we're not exactly seeing spiral arms and dust lanes here. If we're lucky, we might see enough extended emission to label a bit of it haze in the publication figure. For the most part, the useful information we get from these images is actually from the spectrum of the light. How much light is arriving at different colors or wavelengths? There are two ways that JWST can examine a source's light. It can take a spectrum by spreading out the light with a spectrograph, which works a bit like a prism, and examining the brightness at each color, or it can use filters that block all but a select range of colors. The latter is a photometric measurement and is essentially a very low resolution spectrum. In both cases, to determine properties like the total mass of a galaxy's stars, their ages, or their chemical abundances, we compare the data to simulations of the spectrum we expect for a galaxy with those properties. These measurements are also how we determine the galaxy's redshift, which tells us what moment in the universe's history we're looking at by telling us how much the light has been stretched by cosmic expansion. The galaxies we've seen with the highest redshift values, greater than 10, are sending us their light from within the first 400 million years after the Big Bang. It's here that we run into a problem. Based on model spectrum comparisons, many of these galaxies seem to have too many stars, or stars that are too old, for the time in which they lived. But there are several ways we could be mistaken, some observational and some theoretical. On the observational side, photometric measurements can sometimes be inaccurate. A few apparently high redshift galaxies turned out to be much closer when we took spectra. There have also been telescope calibration issues, likely all settled now. And then there's the fact that we're only seeing very small patches of the sky. We could have stumbled onto a clump of galaxies not representative of the norm. On the theory side, there's even more uncertainty. Our models of galaxy spectra are based on much closer galaxies. What if early galaxies had different populations of stars, more massive stars and fewer small ones, for instance? What if star formation happened more rapidly in the past due to different physical conditions or varied substantially over time? We're already seeing hints that our models need adjusting based on weird balances of chemicals in the spectra. The most exciting conclusion, of course, would be that those galaxies really are supermassive and couldn't have formed in the time allotted, meaning we have to completely rethink cosmic evolution. So friends, what do you think about this theory? Write your views in the comments section. If you like the video, please like and share the video.